composer asks you to premiere a piece, how do you break down the learning process of the piece with the time limit you've got? I study the, the piece without the tuba, in fact. I read the piece, I have the score, and I try to sing and to see the harmony, the, the lines, the context. So this is my, I spend a lot of time like that. Because when I took, when I, then when I pick the tuba, I know already what I want. I just to need to check some, some passages more difficult, less ergonomical. It's more without the tuba. For me, the most important part of my uh, study is without the tuba, no tuba at all, no instrument. Do you do sport to keep fit for the tuba? I take care about what I eat, uh, how many hours I sleep. I walk a lot. And uh, I recommend you guys to, to be fit to play the tuba. You need to be in shape. You need to, you need, you need to, to have a good, uh, a good night of sleep. You need to rest. Because playing a, a brass instrument is like an athlete. So I like to go to the swimming pool in the morning before I go to the orchestra, for example. I used to go every morning. At, at 7 a.m., I just go there and I swim for 70 minutes, 40 minutes. Then I take a nice shower and then nice breakfast and then I'm ready to go to the orchestra. That's, that's, that's the best warm-up I can, I can advise you to do every day. And early morning, so the mind is also good for the mind. You feel very relaxed. Do you have any more ideas on how to increase musical awareness and focus? Uh, uh, I, I recommend you to find your focus, to find your, your identity start to do some meditation if each one of us can can learn to meditate and every day just 15 or 20 30 minutes just just go down and try to just it's like nothing happens around you and they just stay quiet focus this help you on the focus and help you to to feel really your energy concentrate your energy in in, in your body then when you go to daily life or to play your instrument, you just feel the energy coming like that. It's it's uh, for me it was it was what I learned with meditation, and I, I really appreciate. It. You need to really preoccupy your brain with information, so you're trying to sing as loud as you possibly can in your brain. So what actually happens? This you know tends to push to the side. Your judging voice, singing pitch, singing uh, music, singing quality of legato, all those things are outward pointed. And realize that judging yourself or commenting on yourself, so to say, is, is like an inward traffic. You know, and so if you make mistakes, this is a very, very important moment is, you know, don't judge yourself when you make a mistake. So let's say a, a legato doesn't work. You have trouble there. Yeah, probably you're not thinking uh, uh, strong enough to improve this legato. So it starts in the practice room and not on stage, so to say. If I succeed in small things, I always keep my mind positive that I could do that, I did this, I did that, 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 that. And then if every day you have small successes, then your week will be a success and then your month and then your year and your life will be a, a long, 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 long success. It's small steps practicing. For me, the high range exercise is like really like sport, like going to a gym and to get the best result, to get no injuries, you have to have a trainer next to you so i can do that so but this is like sport but especially it's like and then if you leave the glissando up you have to come down and one octave lower because uh, the lips are developing in a way that as much you you stretch, you have to relax. Stretching, relaxing. Stretching, relaxing. I am absolutely not the fun of the long notes for practicing. Because long notes is holding a weight 
and not moving and holding a weight not get you stronger. It will get tension and then you will start to move to shake and then then no one no one could develop the muscle without moving. Like if you are if you are grabbing and you're holding down, like holding, 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 then the muscle does not develop. The muscle will get insured, injured. So holding one long note and practicing like long notes, wrong, really wrong. Buzzing is not an aid to just warm up. So I'm I'm not just buzzing for you know ten or fifteen minutes and then I'm on the horn and and going on my business. I'm constantly going back and forth, back and forth between the buzz and the the tuba. So uh, many 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 routines and many exercises in my routine. I'm 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 buzzing it or I'm actually playing it. Buzz play play buzz play. Fat buzz, fat tone. That's that's what I scream at my kids all the time. Fat buzz, fat tone. Fat buzz, fat tone. So I'm constantly buzzing. The main thing that people get in trouble as far as efficiency, the type of embouchure they use. When it starts getting lower, <clears throat> they have a tendency to kind of platypus, platypus into the mouthpiece. If this if this is the you know of course the mouthpiece, and here's your embouchure, and you should always have a nice flat chin. It's like this, and they they'll start going like this in the low register. So you'll hear like this. <laughs> if you form an embouchure and you take your finger and you touch the outer outer points of the embouchure, those should be in line, okay, if, if you're set up right, okay? So they should be in line. And as you get lower, of course, you need to do the right things to make those things stay in line. Oh, but what makes a good tuba player? What makes a good tuba player is the same thing that makes a great musician. And that is is playing from the heart. It's playing from the soul. It's playing from emotions. It's, it's getting your emotions and affecting someone else in the way that you feel. So they feel what you feel. They feel happy if you feel happy. They feel sad if you feel sad. They feel excited if you feel excited.